With the 2024 NFL season already here, there's really no better way for me to frame my expectations and what I see happening this season from a Dynasty Fantasy Football perspective through superlatives. Share your perspective, your responses for these, and let's just have a healthy debate. Starting with the prompt. Of the consensus quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end ones, so we're talking Pat Mahomes at quarterback, Bijan at running back, Justin Jefferson at receiver, and then Sam Laporta at tight end. And for this, to be clear, I have deemed consensus as a collection of about three platforms. We're looking at Keep Trade Cut, we're looking at Flock Community, and we're looking at Fantasy Pros. The most likely to retain their number one positional status for me, it's Bijan Robinson. In Atlanta, I am expecting huge, huge things from that McVay tree coaching staff. Bijan Robinson, it's no joke. There's no mystery. He is going to be a true dominant workhorse there. Following the noise, they want to get him involved. Coach Beak, this or that, the other. It's not hard. It's not hard to see Bijan Robinson maintaining his grip on RB1 after what I project to be, if not RB1 fantasy 2024 production, RB2, maybe RB3. Bijan Robinson, I see him really maintaining his hold on that position. Flipping the script here, the least likely of the positional number ones to hold their value, to hold that label as king. Maybe it's a surprise to many. I'm going with Pat Mahomes at quarterback. I am a big Josh Allen guy. I just am. You look at the performance the last couple seasons. This is the guy that time and time again is the quarterback one from a production standpoint. Projecting out this year, everyone wants to talk about the departures at wide receiver. It doesn't have to definitively be as good of a wide receiver room per se for Josh Allen to go out there from a fantasy perspective and be dominant once again. If you're familiar with me on this channel, I've brought up a couple times. Once Joe Brady took over as offensive coordinator on an interim basis, and now he is the OC on a full-time role, Josh Allen's rushing, 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 Attempts a game skyrocketed more than doubling up to nine a game. For what might be lost, you want to say a Stefan Diggs who's on the wrong side of 30, a Gabe Davis who talk about volatility in fantasy football. Josh Allen is going to have a monster year. That's my conviction. Once again, he's QB1 and he will secure himself the QB1 dynasty consensus valuation when this season 2024 is all said and done reframing it slightly to the 2024 rookie class of your consensus quarterback running back wide receiver and tight end ones so caleb williams jonathan brooks marvin harrison jr and brock bowers who's the most likely and who's the least likely to hold on to that number one designation the most likely it's Brock Bowers. It's Brock Bowers. He is a special talent from a PPR, from a tight end premium format perspective. I just don't see anyone really giving him a run for his money. Ben Sinnott, he is the closest in Washington. We'll see exactly who emerges as a secondary guy behind, obviously, your Terry McLaurins of the world. And Ben Sinnott has as good a shot. But I just see Brock Bowers having a very strong rookie year, not giving up on that tight end one of this 2024 rookie class designation anytime soon. The rookie who is least likely to hold on to their number one positional designation from this class, it's Caleb Williams for me. And I'm not by any means predicting a bad year from Caleb Williams. What I am saying here, is between Jaden Daniels and Drake May. Those two players, if they have a strong year, 
if their teams, importantly, their teams, and I think, look, part of the attribution, the perception, dynasty rankings, dynasty valuations, it's absolutely in some way correlated with team success. It is. It simply is. And with expectations as sky high as they are for Caleb Williams, relative to the other two, what if the Bears aren't in contention for a playoff spot? What if the Patriots completely shock people? Of course, that would be in large part due to a Drake May. I don't really see one happening without the other. I don't see Jacoby Brissett all of a sudden lighting the world on fire, leading the Patriots to a 4-1 and one start. What if the Commanders, we know Jane Daniels is the starter week one, and from a fantasy sense, his rushing upside is simply one of one amongst the quarterbacks in this class. If the Commanders get a big-time win in their division, let's say, against the Eagles or the Cowboys, and Jaden Daniels goes off and has an incredible 30-plus, 35-point week between those two players, they have effectively the best shots, either or here, to overtake Caleb Williams, to overtake a positional number one heading into this year in terms of how things could look at the end of this year. Zooming out a bit to just overall startup dynasty valuations, the player likeliest to crack the top 12, it's Justin Herbert for me. It's Justin Herbert. We're talking about Superflex, of course. That's not already clear. QB is king. Oh, no. No Keenan Allen. Oh, no. No Mike Williams. I think people are way overblowing that. You bring in Lad McConkey. I think a Josh Palmer is one of the more underrated players in the NFL at the receiver position. I look at Joe Alt. That's a franchise tackle. That's an offensive weapon directly impacting, benefiting Justin Herbert. So for a guy that's fallen, and of course there's the injury concern, barely hanging on, if anything, consistently outside now this top 15 even in Dynasty, I see him cracking the top 12 round one in your drafts once again. Who's the rookie? Most likely to crack that top 12 in the 2024 draft class once the season's all said and done? For me, it's Jalen Polk. It's Jalen Polk, a guy who's outside of even the top 15, similar to Herbert again. But I see him having an incredible opportunity. He's clearly already wide receiver one in New England. And if you're not familiar, I am a big, big Drake May guy. I am a massive Drake May fan. He is going to have success year one. Jalen Polk is going to be the primary beneficiary. We're going to be talking about a guy who will be in that top 12 of this 2024 rookie class, but I can see even a path to being in that top 10. Good things coming 12, sticking on the theme of a dozen top 12. We're talking positionally. Who is the most likely quarterback, running back, receiver, tight end to make that jump into that number one type at their position? Once this season's over, Drake May is going to be a top 12 quarterback. He's going to be considered a QB1. I think he's going to be a top 10 quarterback when this season's all said and done. Expectations have been set so low already. I know it's just been preseason, but those third and 14, 15-yard runs, those passes in stride, anticipation across the field, those shades are going to turn into much more routine plays once Drake May becomes the full-time starter. If I had to venture out over under, it's week two and a half. If not week two, it's week three. Drake May takes over. Drake May is going to cement himself as a QB1 this season. The running back most likely to break into the top 12 at the position, it's James Cook for me. Similarly to how Josh Allen was a beneficiary of a Joe Brady takeover. The same can be said for James Cook. We're talking as high as seven targets in a game. We're talking as high as 25 carries. This guy is clearly the running back one. I know there was a couple rookies brought in. You've got Ty Johnson. I am convicted he's going to have a strong RB1 caliber, top 10 caliber. 
He's going to be 25. He's not on that 26, 27, 28 range. He still has the staying power, the appeal for me to be able to jump up a bit from his current RB15 peripheral. James Cook, I expect a big year out of him. Big things out of the Buffalo Bills in general. He's going to be a top 12 running back in Dynasty once this season is done. The player most likely to crack wide receiver 12 or better, frankly, for me, wide receiver 10 or better territory, it's Rome Adunze. You talk about competition, DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, a Caleb Williams under center. The rookie to rookie connection is something that shouldn't be overlooked or discounted. DJ Moore has the incumbency advantage in Chicago, but not with Caleb Williams. I expect Rome to be utilized in a multitude of ways as he was at Washington. A guy who can crack a thousand yards have honestly a season in that Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave range as a rookie. You're talking about a guy who is absolutely going to be viewed as a wide receiver one in dynasty amongst the community easily, 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 easily. The tight end who's most likely to crack the top 12 at the position I can honestly see similarly to Roma Dunze, top 10, similar to Roma Dunze. He's a rookie. It's Ben Sinnott. It's Terry McLaurin. And then it's wide open. Ben Sinnott is right at the top of the queue. Everybody's favorite topic, call in your shot, breakout candidates. The quarterback breakout of the year will be Bryce Young. Bryce Young, the number one overall pick, the guy who went before CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson. Will Levis. Everybody loves to pile on, throw the bus label out there, but I am throwing out the Dave Canales is there to completely revamp things. We already saw a glimpse in preseason, the only preseason action. He goes down, gets you in one drive, six fantasy points. Bryce Young clearly has talent. It didn't just go away upon entry into the NFL. He will have a successful year, a breakout year in the sense, a guy who's QB 20 plus, he's got a chance to be fringe QB one. I really believe that. I really do. I know it's crowded at the quarterback position, But having Bryce Young outside of the top 20 at the quarterback position is criminal to me. Bryce Young is going to have a hell of a bounce back, a breakout 2024 there in Carolina. The breakout running back for me, it's Zamir White. And it's funny, as I'm recording, I'm seeing speculation about Dylan Lowby. Look, Zamir White's the guy. He's the guy there in Vegas. He's not this incredible receiver. So on third downs, Sure, you're going to see rotation. You're going to see a Dylan Lowby, some rotation, maybe even a Madison, an Abdullah, but Zamir White in a Vegas offense where, look, Gardner Minshew is a serviceable NFL quarterback, but you're going to need a heavy dose of an effective run game. Zamir White is going to be that version of a Vegas bell cow. I'm not saying he's going to be guns blazing, a top five, a top 10 RB. But around that RB12 territory, I see a strong year by Zamir White. And I see a guy who, when it's all said and done, I see a leap up into the RB15 or so territory. I just don't get why Zamir White, all of a sudden, depending on where you look, isn't even an RB2. Wide receiver, the breakout guy for me, it's Josh Palmer. I've mentioned Justin Herbert already. Josh Palmer is going to be a guy where You're talking production-wise, a sneaky top 30 guy, potentially hovering around wide receiver 25 even, low-end wide receiver 2. It's wide open there in LA. It really is. I'm talking about a meaningful jump from wide receiver 55. He has that incumbent advantage with Justin Herbert. I expect big things out of Ladd McConkey, don't get me wrong, but I see Josh Palmer having a strong year, being effectively the breakout guy a jump from wide receiver 55 to wide receiver 35 in dynasty or even higher. At tight end, my breakout candidate, it's Jake Ferguson, a guy that's barely holding on to that tight end one valuation, 
it's CeeDee Lamb and then it's Jake Ferguson. It's similar NFC East situations, I feel like, in terms of the alpha receiver, comparing it to Washington, to be clear. And then it's the tight end who can be really a co-primary receiving weapon. Really high on Jake Ferguson relative to his current price and dynasty. It all boils down to difference making production at tight end. I get it. And on tight end premium, scoring, all that. I just see Jake Ferguson, a guy on the periphery of tight end 12. I see a guy who's going to be in contention for tight end 7, tight end 8. The player most likely to be traded in your league this year is Tajay Spears. I say that because running back, first off, one of the most volatile positions, really the least valued position in a lot of ways by the community. We're so used to hearing zero RB, people just don't want to be caught on the wrong side of it, especially in a dynasty fantasy football sense. Tennessee, though, is an intriguing place. It's an intriguing place. I think a very upstart team, potential breakout. In my experience, it's been all quiet on the Tennessee front in terms of RB trades in general in Dynasty this offseason. People don't want to lose. We're all just wondering what exactly will it look like in Tennessee. You've got an offensive minded head coach who's had success, Brian Callahan, that is, in Cincinnati. You sign Tony Pollard, though. The veteran presence who seen some pretty good fantasy days in his career, who exactly emerges? And as this low end fringe top 20 running back, there's going to be times early on where I am convicted he's the man, and then maybe he isn't. Really a week to week basis. Things could be very much in flux in Tennessee. So people are going to try to cash in in opportunities that they can potentially cut their losses at a time where they feel the sky might be falling. It's a headache to make sense of. And I think that headache isn't really going to go anywhere in the short term, at least. The player with absolutely no chance of being traded in your dynasty league, based on my observations, where he's going in drafts. And to that end, I guess it explains the exact mindset of the drafters of this player and getting him while you can, getting your guy, not even counting on his potential availability in a trade, it's Marvin Harrison Jr. The expectations are sky high, elite prospect. I don't have to tell you twice, but he is being drafted near his ceiling in the top 12. We're talking about a player who is basically too big to fail. People are not going to move off of him this year, where if he hits and delivers upon this early value, or say he has a slump for even a week, two weeks, people are not going to move off of Marvin Harrison Jr. I just don't see him transacting much, if at all. Let's end the video on a fun one, a random one. A player who will assume the most fab of any single claim this season will be Trey Tucker. Where exactly do I draw the line here? Dynasty, league to league, there's a whole variety of waiver wires thin to absolutely non-existent in terms of any relevancy potential. Trey Tucker, he's around 50-50% owned across sleeper leagues last time I've checked. Antonio Pierce has repeatedly beaten the Trey Tucker drum. With a new quarterback in Gardner Minshew, of course you've got Devontae and Brock Bowers there as the primary guys, but Trey Tucker just screams to me the wide receiver who's going to have a really nice game in the first week or two or three. Now, the viability of him finishing as a consistent in your lineup, a top, say, 40 receiver, it's no guarantee. But nonetheless, he's a guy who is going to stack some momentum and be a focal point of those marginal, marginal moves when you get a chance so few and far between in Dynasty Fantasy Football. Guys, let me know your responses for these superlative prompts. Yell at me, agree with me, do whatever your heart's telling you. I really want to see where your guys' head's at. We're fueling perspective, trying to just get ourselves ready, set expectations for this year. There's no way this ever backfires, right? That video in a few months is going to be a hell of a reaction. I'll see you guys much sooner, though. Have a great one. Cannot wait. Hope your team wins in week one. Peace.